Okay, welcome back everyone. I really hope you enjoyed the uh, first segment of building a resilient team with Scott Wentworth. Uh, let's get started here in part two. Sorry, I keep skipping, skipping a few slides here. That's quite all right. Um, so uh, really it's important, I think, to, to create a, a, um, a vision of what a winning season is going to look like because it, it really applies at many different levels. Um, so defining what that's going to be through a collaborative team effort, not just dictating this is what a winning season is going to be, this is how, what, how you're going to feel, uh, it's something that, that we do with our entire team. And we do it um, in December. So we have an end of season lunch. We, we celebrate the season that was. Uh, we have all sorts of ways of, of recognizing craftsmanship awards and that type of thing. But then let's turn the page and now's the time to start creating the vision for the next year. So we're doing that right from like the week after the, the construction and, and maintenance season ends for our teams. Um, and, and really creating something then that's a shared vision. So uh, how, if we don't have a shared vision for what that is, how will you know if you had a winning season or not? What, what are you cre keeping score on to know if you're progressing or not? Um, the example that we spoke of earlier was uh, Coach Jimmy Valvano and the North Carolina uh, State Wolfpack. And I believe it was 1983, uh, they had a season. And Jimmy Valvano was sort of a middle of the road coach and the North Carolina State Wolfpack was pretty much a middle of the road team. But his first meeting of the team, uh, he brought them together, no basketballs came out uh, in the gym. And uh, what, they, what he said to the team was, uh, I'm gonna be winning the national championship and I'm inviting you to join me on that journey. And for the rest of the, 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 the practice, they practice celebrating the cutting down of the nets as if they've just won the national championship. There's nobody else in the gym, just the team there. Uh, it's the traditional thing when a, a, a team wins the, the NCAA basketball championship. So they're going up in the ladder once at a time, cutting off one strand of the net and hooping and hollering and, um, there's a team that fought a lot of adversity through their season. But that vision uh, of what that winning season was going to be like, and not only a, a vision of it, but knowing what it was going to feel like was something that was embedded in them and carried them through um, just adversity at every, every turn of the road. Um, and there's actually a, an ESPN 30 for 30 uh, documentary on it and, and if you had a chance to see that it's very very inspirational much more to the story than just that yeah so I remember speaking about it before and I actually have it written down I haven't seen it yet but what a uh, what an awesome story yeah just just terrific to see what that vision can can do in carrying the team forward so when we do a, a collaborative team visioning session this is this is what it looks like we have a uh, uh, hundred people in the room and we break out into tables and uh, we're talking about, in the case of our past one, we had uh, looking at a new decade. So it was really creating a vision of, of what's this team going to accomplish over the next 10 years. And uh, we were very fortunate we, we did this 10 years ago and we were able to share our notes and say, well, this is what our goals were uh, 10 years ago and let's check off the boxes of the things that we accomplished. So it really builds a sense of yeah, we, we can do this, and then moving forward. If you do this for just one year, you're gonna be able to have the same exercise of being able to say, well, what were the things that we were looking to, to accomplish? Uh, how did we score them? How did we do? And look at the things that we did together, and then be able to carry that forward to a, a vision for the next year. Yeah, that's really great. And, and I'm sure there's lots of people viewing here right now, our business owners that might be saying like, oh, it's a big room, it's a lot of people. They might not even, their whole crew might not even fill up one table. But I'm assuming you still recommend, you know, getting the team together, getting everyone on the same page and, and, and making goals and, and all that. Am I not correct? Absolutely. It's absolutely important to do that. And the earlier you do it in your business, the sooner it becomes embedded in your culture that way. Um, and it's a whole lot easier to do with one table of people than it is to do to do with eight or 10 or 12 tables of people in it. Um, so it doesn't matter the size or, or the experience of the company. If your company just starting out, do it. You, you know, you really need to be able to create a shared vision and, and goal of what you're, you're trying to accomplish. 
instead of a PowerPoint presentation, you can just have your smartphone and have some notes on there around a small table having coffee or whatever and do the exact same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So this is the, the structure to it of where are we now, where do we want to be, and how we are, are we going to get there. So with that, then you're creating goals that, that are inspiring. Um, they should be something that, that is stretching your team to reach for. It shouldn't be, hey, let's increase sales by 2% this year. Um, that, that's not very inspiring. If it's double day figures, 10% or 12%. That's something that you're gonna to have to work for and you're gonna to have to work for as a team. Um, that being said, it needs to be achievable. It, it can't be, um, let's increase our sales by 30%, <coughs> excuse me, or, or um, you know, let's increase our efficiency uh, by 25%, um, uh, an efficiency increase of, of five to 7% would be a really big deal and it's achievable and all of those things are things that you can measure. Uh, they need to be things that, that you can keep track and keep score and be able to say, yeah, we, we are making progress or, hey, we're behind where we expected to be at this point. Let's rally the team together and let's really dig in for the next couple of weeks, catch up and, and keep pacing along the way that we had collectively determined we wanted to do right from the start of the season. Hey Scott, uh, it just quickly is for measuring. Uh, any recommendations? Excel spreadsheets? Any program software? Just you know, anything you recommend there to uh, to keep track of these things? There's all sorts of different ways of, of doing it. Um, whether it's just an Excel spreadsheet. Hey, our, our early years in the company, it was a piece of graph paper. It was a big piece of graph paper that I would color in. Uh, you know. Red was our goal for this month, the volume done, and blue is, is what we accomplished. And uh, um, tracking year to date on that business as well. Something that's visible or visual uh, for people to connect to as well is really important. And simple. The, the yeah. simpler the, the, the measurements can be, the easier it is to track and, and to really relate to for your team. So easy just to sit around the table, as we were mentioning in the last slide, sit around the table and just show everyone that, that graph or those different uh, key measurements. And okay, great. Absolutely. So again, measuring what those things are. Uh, winners keep score is a, is a great mantra, um, but keeping it simple and meaningful as we just talked about. So one of the things that we, uh, you know, part of my job now is, uh, simplifying all the complexities that go with a company of this size. And so uh, one of the key measurements we have for construction is what we call the winning formula. And that breaks down into hours work. So our budget is based upon um, working so many hours in a season. So we need to be able to track, are we going to be able to accomplish that? Because our overhead has to be recovered over those hours. So we need people to work the hours that, that we're committing to. And then billable hours. How many of those hours are in fact billable? Um, because when you, you break everything else aside in a landscape company, it's all about serving your clients well, serving your team, um, having great financials, um, you know, being involved in the community. If we were a manufacturing company, the, the widget that a landscape design built company would be producing is billable hours. It comes down to that level of simplicity. Um, so we really need to have some awareness and intention of that. And then the last thing is project efficiency, because that can help both your, your field staff and your estimating staff, uh, and even your design team. Um, what are the things that we're efficient at? What are the, the incremental ways that we can become better uh, in all of these things? So we measure these um, weekly through uh, how many hours are we working against what we, we uh, have set as goals, what are those percentage of billable hours? And then what is the, the estimated to, to actual hours for, for project efficiency? And then we track that every week uh, for every member of our teams. And it's usually just a green, yellow, red. So green, you're, you're, hitting, you're hitting the mark on these categories. Yellow, you're, you're close, but, but you need a little bit of attention to get there. And red, you're falling short. Um, so what needs to be done uh, to, to bring that red up into um, what we've committed to and, and what's going to produce a win. And if you've got these three things in place, 
your financials are going to take care of themselves. Um, so three easy things to measure, three th things to communicate what you're sharing and uh, scoring your, your team on. Yeah, that's great advice. Uh, and one of the things that uh, potentially we might actually be doing, we could do a whole presentation on project efficiencies. Um, but I think that's one that we might be working on as well. That's super important. All right, great. Thanks. Absolutely. Uh, what does a winning team keep doing? Yeah, so a winning team keeps winning. They keep doing the things that they've learned to do that wins. Uh, a culture of winning just breeds more winning. Nobody, nobody who's a winner says, you know, okay, well, this is great. We, we're doing all these things. It's great. We're winning. We're, we're, we're all benefiting from that. But why don't we just slack off for a while? Why, why don't we not do these things, the, these habits that we've created? No, you, you, you develop these processes and systems to win, and you want to keep doing that. You, you want to communicate the score. You know, where are we in the season right now? Are we, are we hitting our goals? Are we behind? What, what is that? And all of that comes down to, you know, that, that awareness and intention on it, but also then celebrating the wins along the way. It's not just, um, you know, the championship at the end of the season. It's how did we do this this week? How did we do this month? Um, you know, what are those three key goals that we set um, as a team? Uh, great, we accomplished it. So now let's build on that and build more momentum to keep on our winning ways. Yeah, I really think these days, um, you know, <coughs> the hectic lives that we live, uh, sometimes it's really easy to skip, but even if it's a very small celebration, um, sometimes it's easy to skip those and, and just keep trudging along, you know, uh, and then it feels like a bit more like a grind as you, you know, go a little bit too long without celebrating some of those wins. So I think that's, uh, that's great advice. Very energizing, that's for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is another concept that we've been talking about, and, and it's really the, the journey that builds the team. And this really talks to, to what we just spoke about. Um, there's all sorts of uh, sayings about that. Focus on the journey, not the destination. The, the reward is found not in finishing activity, but in doing it. And that the journey is the destination. Well, in fact, that, that is the thing that you look back on. Um, I, I, I recall... An interview with Wayne Gretzky uh, a few years after he retired and he was asked the question what what is it that you miss from your playing days you know all those all those championship years all those uh, records that he sat and, and everything and he's you know it was it was it hoisting the cup and going around the the rink and he said no I, what I miss is being with the guys in the dressing room and and working on things in practice and working together as a team to get things done um, and I think when we look back or, or look forward on what we're going to look back on in, in our careers and in, in our teams, it's going to be exactly that. What was the things that we worked on together as a team that formed that journey that created a, a, a winning season, a, a winning culture, uh, something that we're really proud to be a part of and really energized by? Yeah, it's... Um... Again, it can be related in so many different ways in, in business and in personal life. And uh, I myself, I'm a big kind of backcountry paddler, like the adventure. And uh, whenever I'm out there, it's never about getting to a certain campsite or a certain lake. It's just enjoying the whole way out there. And it can be related to the hockey stories and business and life. And uh, I think it's a great, uh, a great thing to remember as we're going through all this. And because there's, there's difficult times, just like in business and just like, you know, obviously in the hockey story and myself going the backcountry, it's never always easy, but, uh, you know, the journey is all part of it. Absolutely. All right. What's in it for me? I think a lot of people yeah. ask this question. Uh, I think that's a very legitimate question to ask. You know, we, we, we need to encourage those questions and we need to, to discuss these things. We're asking for a lot of commitment from our team. Um, we're looking for a, a lot of commitment that we're putting towards them as well. So, the question of what's in it for me and how to reward a winning, winning team, I think is a very pertinent one. So um, it, it needs to be built on performance rewards and, and profit sharing. Um, the principle we've used um, right from the very start of the company is that we split our nets into to three. If we hit our goals, we split it into three ways. One is for um, cash flow, one is for capital purchases, and the other third of our net goes into the pool uh, for our performance rewards, which essentially is profit sharing, which everybody on the team uh, shares from. 
Um, the other aspect to it is, is benefits in the golden rule. And, and, you know, we all think of the golden rule as, as do unto others as you would want others to do unto you. But in fact, I'd submit that that's really not true. Uh, the real golden rule would be to do unto others as they would want done unto them. Because we all want something different. We all have different personalities and, and needs and value different things. So again, we need to ask that question, what, what would you see as, as being you know, great benefits um, for, for a winning season? Um, having these opportunities for personal development, um, having the opportunities within your team to be able to progress one's career along, uh, to increase their contribution, and with that, to increase their reward um, for that as well. As well, I, I, you can never discount. I, I think it, it's part of the, the, the human being uh, that you want to be part of something bigger than yourself. You know, it, it's just so rewarding to be uh, part of a team that can accomplish so much more than what any one of us can on our own. Um, so there's great rewards, I think, in, in all of those things that, that all of us could offer to our teams in some way or the other. Yeah, and you know, and I, I think a lot of people originally might think just you know the profit sharing and, and more money but uh myself being a certain point in my career there's a lot of different things that i can say aren't just about the money again recognition and uh asking me just my own opinion on things it does go a really long way to to feel like you're part of something so really great points great and uh, here we are i skipped over <laughs> to the the last slide. Uh, Scott, listen, I want to say thank you so much. I think there was a ton of value in uh, in this presentation and your experience really shows it. Uh, I like to finish off on these, uh, these sort of presentations by just asking a question um, and, and maybe some value to our viewers. Any books or resources, websites, podcasts, anything you can think of off the top of your head that you uh, would recommend for uh, you know, great information or just inspiration to some of the viewers? Well, I, as I said, when we discussed this earlier, I, I, I could provide you probably with, with 10 pages of, of uh, resources. Certainly, um, anything I have by way of a, a, a business degree or, or learning about teams comes from um, reading and taking in all sorts of webinars and podcasts, and we really encourage our team to do that as well. Um, some fundamental ones that, that uh, we really has become uh, part of the 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 learning for our team as they first come on board is Simon Sinek, Start With Why. Um, and, and in that he speaks to, uh, to the concepts that we, we just touched on briefly here. Um, Ken Blanchard has a whole lot of, of great, simple business books that bring across some, some great uh, concepts with that. Uh, his book, Raving Fans, is another one that, uh, that is really high in our recommended reading list. Uh, it really speaks to serving your clients in a way that, uh, that they want to go out and share that with everybody. Um, they become your greatest uh, marketing tool in being able to, to provide raving fan service um, for them. And the last one is a, is a book uh, by a good friend, Jim Paluch. And, and Jim wrote a book years ago called Five Important Things. And he really speaks of things there that really are, are guiding principles, I think, in the way that we uh, lead our teams and, and approach life. Um, so I think th those are three great examples that I think would, would help get people on that way. But, I, you know, there's so much great information out there, both on the web and, and through books. And um, read yourself rich. Um, you know, the, the, you're going to be a different person next year from this year by the things that, that you – uh, learn and by the people that you meet. So take advantage of all of those opportunities. Awesome. Well, thanks very much, Scott. That's tons of uh, really, really great information. And uh, just want to say thank you again. Thank you very much, Sean. Take care. Have a good one. You too. Thanks. Bye.